All right, good morning traders. If you can hear me and see my screen, just uh, type yes in the questions there. Uh, welcome to the, thank you, all right, we're up and running. Uh, thanks for coming to the live trading webinar. This is the advanced education from Bookmap. Uh, we do the live analysis Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and live trading with JTrader and Scott Polsini, uh Wednesdays and Thursdays. Uh, the whole goal here is to provide, provide you with this fo educational foundation uh, it is pretty advanced stuff uh, here in the in the um, in these webinars. We're going to go through a lot of different things at a pretty high level, uh, but it still gives you a very good foundation of market mechanics, uh, understanding how these markets work. Uh, so uh, let's uh, jump in and get going here. Uh, general disclosure: all Bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Risk disclosure: trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's uh, let's jump in and uh, let's take a look at Bookmap and see what's going on here. Um, let me get rid of uh, point of control here for a moment. Just to kind of look at a clean chart. Uh, we have stops and icebergs on here. We'll look at them a little bit later. Uh, but um, a very important element as well. Not the sub chart, the on chart. There we go. Okay. All right. And zoom out a little bit. Some really, really choppy action. And then uh, all of a sudden, end of the day, uh, massive, massive spike. <laughs> We've seen the last few days. It has made for some really challenging trading uh, during the uh, regular trading hours. Uh, we had data this morning uh, for the uh, non-farm uh, payrolls uh, and employment data, uh, and uh, pretty strong numbers. Uh, so uh, we're you know we see the move to the upside here. Uh, after the numbers, it was immediately went down, uh, and then here we are, uh, 9:30 cash open, uh, back up above. Uh, we're going to go through the market structure in here uh, in just a minute. Uh, very important element to understand within the order flow is market structure. Uh, and uh, maybe I'll go through an exercise on that. Uh, so you guys uh, will start with market mechanics and then build out into structure. It's so important to understand uh, really how these markets work. Uh, and um, let's start off though with a bigger picture on our candlestick chart. And just to get an idea of what's going on out there. Uh, so this is a daily chart over here on the left. Uh, and uh, you can see the a uh, uh, lot of volatility here, the move down um, uh, over several days ago, uh, and then the move back up, this retest back up. We were looking for it. Uh, we uh, we saw the spike below here. We were looking for the pullback into some areas, and this is what we marked up the other day, uh, beginning of the week, uh, in fact. Uh, and uh, it was a zone up in here, and uh, the reasons for these areas in here is market structure. Okay, so we want to first look at and outline our higher time frame uh, structural areas, our levels, well, what we're interested in, uh, and then we're going to look at order flow around those levels. So uh, we can see the uh, this is the hourly chart here in the middle. Uh, not getting too much out of this daily except for, as you guys can see, this move back up into where it, there's a kind of a... a you know, a, a spike here uh, on the downside right here on this candle. This was back on, what day was this? Um, on on uh, January 11th. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the, you, you can see we kind of, then, then we had a, a pretty strong drop from that area, and it's a retest all the way back to it. Here it is on the hour chart, okay? We were looking for that retest to this area or zone in here. Uh, and, and we marked it up, certain areas, and, and uh, did they hold or not? Well, this one blew right through it, okay? It, it, it took a little while, and it was a very choppy day, and then it blew through it. Uh, and then the next level was up in this little swing here, uh, and it, it blew through that. Uh, the next one was up here, uh, whoops, um, the, um, uh, where it dropped from. Okay. Well, it went a little bit higher kind of up into this area in here. You can look at maybe a swing over here, but also you can look at maybe a point of control or like a high volume node in, in, in this area here or where it dropped from on the hourly chart. And you can see buyers went up and tested that area on this hourly chart. Now, what happened the other day was immediately uh, after that uh, 
regular trading hours, it, it dropped uh, tremendously. Now we have earnings and we have other things in here uh, we'll, that we look at. Uh, but uh, still, it's, it's where people dealt in the auction. And we're looking for, uh, you know, in the market structure here, we're looking at these candlesticks in a very different way here. Uh, we're looking at it as an auction. And we're kind of making a lot of assumptions because we don't have all the data here. Uh, with the candlestick but what it is uh, giving us is just higher time frame market structure we don't know the volume within it we don't know the order book within it we can see kind of you know the the you know the the big moves unfolding or areas of consolidation etc uh, and then marking our chart up around those areas here so uh, this was a, a pretty big zone in here and you can see we've been bashing around in this zone in here uh, and uh, you know just to just to show you like you know there's a little swing in here uh, there's also kind of the top of the uh, range here that we're just bouncing off of right now uh, or an hour ago uh, and we're back up into these areas here so uh, here's the 15 minute or I'm sorry this is a five minute chart uh, and what's going on in there well uh, we see this is that big move down we saw sideways consolidation uh, another move down this was yesterday's after the close all the way back up to where it dropped from here we're going to go through these concepts again and again in here uh, because uh, this is testing market structure. Uh, so um, uh, anyway, uh, uh, you can see what happened again. Okay, well, we opened up, uh, uh, you know, down in here, and uh, we've been chopping around, uh, having a hard time getting back up into uh, this area up here. You can see the structural area though, and you can see the wicks, the selling in here. Okay, where is it happening? Right in here, where this previous uh, area uh, auctioned as well so uh, somewhere around this uh, 83 um, you know 82 to, to 86 level here uh, in the S&P and uh, and you can see we're you know we made even lower highs here uh, and we see selling starting to come in now testing maybe some of the wicks down in these areas here so uh, we just tested this one it looks like around um, 44 67 so maybe you can come down into 61 all right, so we're just going to take a look at some of those areas in here, uh, and uh, uh, we just just to get a you know a feel for our higher time frame, right? Uh, where price might go. Are we going to come back down in, into into these areas here again on the hourly? Uh, we'll, we'll we're going to look at the order flow to give us insight. All right, so let's jump into uh, to Bookmap and uh, let me see if I any questions here. Uh, let's see. Can't join the stream. Why not? Okay. Um, oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if Sam's in here. If you can get the that server up, the streaming server. Let me reach out to Sam. Hold on, just a minute, guys. All right. Okay. Uh, good morning, Fabio. Um, yeah, super fast action. I mean, it's been really brutal out there uh, in, in some of these auctions in here. Um, so uh, uh, anyway, let's jump into book map and see what's going on. Uh, uh, well, pretty, pretty beautiful chart right away here, as you guys can see. High liquidity here in the auction on the higher time frame. Uh, on the bid. This is where we trade into at 830. Just note this kind of activity in here. See how we've traded like the, the news came out and where did it go? It went to liquidity. Okay. In fact, we can zoom into these areas and see precisely what happened here. This These guys pulled here at this price level and they traded into these levels here. Surprisingly, it did not come back down into this uh, 4435 uh, high liquidity here. And look how they're behaving down here. Okay. They're adding in, and there's people front running as well. Okay, they're they're adding more liquidity in front of it. They want to be buyers in front of it, and this red area is the highest in the order book here. Uh, they're adding in at this uh, price level here, as well. They want to buy. Okay, there's also buyers below it here. So uh, we've got a lot of interest uh, in this area here uh, uh, on the, on the bid. 
and uh, we've got our nine that was nine o'clock 930 cash open here it is we move down okay and then we move right back up and trade into high liquidity here on the offer okay so we we know the auction here uh, these are our big levels here uh, to take a look at All right so what uh, we have um, uh, here uh, the swing, but uh, also high liquidity up in these areas. And then uh, basically down here, the swing, but uh, a high liquidity down here around the um, uh, 35 area. Okay. So, uh, yeah, and we're in that range, but uh, let's take a look at the market structure. All right. So we have all sorts of structure, good structure in here to take a look at. Uh, here's, a, here's a kind of a consolidation, a breakout started to accept above it and then it broke down after the news though it was the news event that drove it away from this value area in here okay, it was the, up in this area here potentially uh, uh, we had uh, uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, buyers speculating uh, maybe before the news or uh, whatever the case may be we see buyers in here uh, we know uh, the numbers were actually pretty good we see them move to the downside though now we're right back up and now we're looking for a potential breakout uh, in fact look at the buyers coming in this looks good okay i would look for these buyers to try to spike it up into maybe 4500 uh, up in here this is where the higher time frame liquidity is okay so let's uh we'll come we'll come back and take a look at this uh in just a second we're still marking up our structure okay note the structure down here uh, the bottom of that range and see how it, came, it created another structure Okay, another breakout. Uh, boy, I kind of messed that one up. Uh, but then, uh, and here's a new one. Now it looks like we're going to try to create another structure up here. We're anticipating that. Okay, so, and why? Uh, because uh, we look at the volume within that structure. Okay, and where's the liquidity? Okay, it's up in these areas here. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that'll be breaking to highs of the day here. Now, let's just, we want to be careful in highs of the day. Uh, here, here's a 44.90 liquidity looking for that to transact and looks like there's quite a bit of quite a few sellers in here uh, they, they want to uh, uh, they're adding into the book as price is coming up toward them so I'm looking for this to transact here let's see these buyers meet these sellers here okay so there's our move and still good buying here so I want to see buyers above this event here okay uh, right in here all right, this is going to be now kind of a new a new event or new area to watch in here. Okay, we have a lot of icebergs that also kicked off in this area. Okay, but we're still seeing more buyers above it for the moment. Okay, if sellers come in, then we'd be looking for a move back down to here, 44.88. This would be the first pullback here. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, now looking for buyers to come right back in. Uh, to be honest, it's already moving pretty nicely here. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm still looking for buyers to come right back in here. Let's see if they do. Okay. And the reason being is look at the volume uh, in here. So, for example, this volume. Okay. We can see it in the dots as well. All right. So we're looking for buyers to come in here. Okay. We're looking for the bid to light up in here as well. Okay, and I'm looking for now the the uh, looking for uh, right around this kind of 88 level, maybe 88, 88 and, and a half or so. That's where I'm really looking for the buyers right now. Okay, for them to come back up and trade into 90 and uh, 92, and then maybe up into uh, 95 area here. Okay, so let's see if we get our buyers here. So this is one of the scenarios we're looking for: buyers here, and then the move up into 90. Okay, I want to see that bid start to light up as well. Okay, on the bid here, there's, there's a little bit down here at 85. And now let's see the buyers lift it up into 90. Okay, and then uh, higher the day here, uh, get back up into maybe uh, 90, 92 or so. Okay, didn't get them, didn't get them. Let's see if we get another rotation up there. If we don't, now that's scenario number one. We're looking for our buyers up here. Scenario number two is we don't get them. We get sellers down below and we get them here at 86. We're looking for them to break it uh, and then maybe trade down to 80 here. Okay, so here come our buyers. This is what we're looking for. God, it's, it's hard to, even this S&P is moving, moving pretty quickly. It's hard to, to get in here. Um, there's another pullback here. 
and let's see if the buyers can still do it if we exhaust it out up here and we need to see more buyers back up at 90. all right i think no not yet let's see a little bit more up here and then we should be able to break there they go so looking for the break now up into 92 okay immediately pulled back okay all the way back down to the bottom of the range So, yeah, this is actually something I want to cover here because, like, these days have been, we're looking for this to continue, the trend to continue, uh, and uh, to trade up into this new range here that we're, we're outlining. It might be breaking here, okay? And if it does, we're looking for a, a pretty strong move on the sell side. Uh, below here, they should be able to at least test 85 here, this transaction. Okay, I'm, I'm still still looking for buy side uh uh, to be honest, but the secondary scenario here is uh, very high volume here at 85, and then the break of it down into 80, uh, and maybe uh, maybe back even to 70 here. Okay, bottom of the range. All right, so this would be a false breakout on this higher time frame here. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if we get our buyers come streaming in again here, looking for them. Once again, we've you know got some some stops, not really. Uh, we do have a lot of icebergs down here, though, and uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get maybe a little bit of a squeeze going here, and move right back on up into this high liquidity. Come on, buyers! Look at this—a nice cluster of buying. They should be able to sweep it right up into 92. Looking for them. Yeah, I would take a shot on it. You know, it's not a. This is not a recommendation. Uh, it's just uh, I'm seeing volume here. And I see volume pressure within this range here. So I'm looking for them to extend on up into top of the range. Okay, that, that would be my thought behind this. Of what I see the order flow within this range. Okay, and stop would be probably down around this area in here, some of these lines. So around 86 or so. Okay, probably stopped out on that one. Still, probably still be in at 86 or so here. Okay, buyers, let's see it. Let's see if you can move it now. Nice cluster up here. No. Okay, looking for this. Looking for the next scenario in here. And what might unfold here? Okay. Are these guys going to be on the hook in here? We're going to see sellers now drive it down into 80. I don't see it yet. This is really a, a lot of icebergs in here uh, as well. That's a uh, how do we went from 3,000 down to so 2,500 icebergs in here, All right? So uh, yeah, it looks like uh, looks like this is this um, false breakout here uh, is what this is going to turn into. We're still still watching it here. This has been really really tricky uh, last uh, um, a few days, and I'll go over that in just a minute. Um, and looking for stop one one of the things that really helps us on determining if it's a false breakout is the stop runs and big ones too uh what we'd be looking for okay yeah you want rambo you want to look at the icebergs on chart okay yeah sorry guys uh okay here's a little bit of a flip of the book all right let's see if we get a, a, a low volume pullback here and then trend continuation okay so uh, 
Yep, back up to where we just broke from here. Now looking for sellers again in here, right around this 82 and three quarters, and they should hit it now. They should be able to hit it down into this 80 level, uh, and let's see if they can go further. Okay, we're back in the range here. We're looking for them to trade into 80 here, right? This was a low volume pullback here after pretty pretty strong volume here. All right, so uh, looking for 80. So we have to kind of flip our idea here. Uh, and uh, and then down into maybe 75 down here is a nice area to test. Okay, due to the market structure and the breakout here. Okay, and we also have liquidity down here at 70. Room is full. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, go to the other room, uh, Ellie. There's uh, stream one. And then, uh, or, or, or Bruce at book map there. Okay, this is still a low volume pullback, even on this cluster here, right? So we're still sell side here. There's 80, looking for more, looking for the 75 level here. All right, so now what I want to cover here about this really, really tricky trading um, with uh, it, and the mornings haven't been so bad. Um, uh, this has been a little tricky on, on this higher time frame is starting to play out like this is a false breakout here. We, we, we will see, though, like uh, it might be kind of bouncing off of some of these areas and then we get the buyers to continue. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, you know, 80 just transacted and we're still looking, you know, more. Uh, for more here but we gotta we gotta come in here and like it's tricky uh, uh look at the cluster of buying starting to come in here back up above this area this is this is where we get these um uh like this would be a false breakdown then and we're looking for buyers to trade it back up into this previous range up here and this previous cluster up here okay and our 90 liquidity coming in right now right So I'll go through it and, uh, you know, so we have something to lean on here and what we're looking at. It looks like buyers are going to try to do it. They're back up here. Let's see if there's a lot of buying. This is not a low volume pullback here. So I'm looking for buyers to come in here. We might get a pullback to about 84 here, uh, maybe 83 liquidity here. Okay, now. Great. Let's see if we come right back up here at 85. If we do, we should get a breakout of this range here. Okay, this little break break down range here, and then back up into our previous range here. All right. So uh, uh, we can see a, a little bit of uh, volume or uh, liquidity coming in here at 85. That's where we we got to get back up here, and we're looking for those buyers in here. Okay. This is one individual actor who's who's uh, got the majority of the liquidity here, and he's just taken on. Okay, so let's uh, let's get a little bit higher here. Okay, and I think we I think the buyers got it. Okay, looking for a move back up into the range here. Now the battle ground here is here. Okay, this is what I want to show, and this is what it, this will lead into the next I think conversation. Um, the battleground is here. Okay, this pivot point, we draw up our pivot points in here. Uh, this is uh, where the sellers took it down, okay, and then uh, retested here, and buyers are now back up above it. Okay, this is where the sellers actually dropped it here. We got to get back up above here on buying, right? But uh, we have a smaller structural area in here uh, that we're looking at. Okay, now we're looking for the if if these guys, if these buyers are going to take it back up into the range, this is where we're looking for them. Okay, we're looking for some exhaustion here. Let's see if we can get it. Not at all uh, on the sell side. We're seeing sellers come in. So they'll likely take it right back down to this liquidity here. Okay. Anyway, uh, around some of these ranges in these areas here, this is what I want to cover, uh, is uh, you can see 
um, the um, there's our move into 80 okay so let's just zoom out a little bit more okay yeah they're gonna go for 75 all right this is interesting stuff I mean uh, and, and tricky this is not a low volume pullback okay uh, and uh, uh, we, we can look at the volume within these areas here and compare and contrast. Okay, so uh, I, I'm still I'm still in this uh, for for buy side. If we can get we're trading this uh, trend line here, and this is where that 75 level is here, and we're not seeing buyers come in at all, and they're going for 70 here. All right, so looking for a big stop run down here. Okay. All right, there we go. There's our big stop run. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Okay, and looking at this area here, looking to see now buyers to come in after that stop run. Back up above 70 here. And then we'd be looking for the move right back to 75 and then maybe back up into our previous range here. Yeah, higher time frame might be stepping in for now, uh, David. All right. I, now, the, the, the idea here uh, is the, um, and, and this is from that choppy uh, action we saw, um, uh, you know, several days this week. Uh, is uh, you, you, we get these moves to the outside of ranges, and then you get stop runs at the at the ends of these ranges. Okay, you can use your sweeps indicator, you can use your stops and icebergs indicator, um, and uh, now we're looking for buyers back up above it, and then a move right back to 75 and right back to 80 here, where they dropped it from. And I'm looking for them. Okay, should be able to come in here. We've already had our move. We had our stop run. So in range bound trading look for the stop runs okay spiked below uh the um uh, the range the bigger ranges in here okay and then look to see if it's a if it's a huge uh stop run uh you, you got to get back up above it here okay just because it's a stop run doesn't mean that uh, uh the um uh sellers are are uh, or the uh, we're gonna we're gonna reverse Okay, we're looking for buyers to come in after that. It's after the event here is what we're, we want to read. What happened after the event? And, and here we go. We're above it now, and I'm looking for more buyers here. Okay, we have a high liquidity here at 75. That's our first area that we're looking for the test. Now, looking again, though, for, I want to see these guys actually pull, and I'd love to see it come up to 80 here. We see guys that have come up in the book here at 80 already. Right, so uh, looking for that scenario here. The bid is starting to add a little bit more here. All right, let's see if we get our big green dots here and lift it up into 75, 76. And these guys should probably pull, I imagine, and we can get a move maybe up into 80 here. No. No, it looks like uh, they're adding even more in here in the book. We're getting the opposite of that. Yeah, let's uh, let's zoom out a little bit more. Let's get our bigger picture approach here. Okay, this is a strong strong uh, a move to the downside, and just tons of stops though. All right, let's see if buyers can bounce off of this. Back up into 74. Okay, so anyway, uh, what, we're, what we're looking at here is, um, uh, again, like where these stop runs, big stop runs occurred at the bottom of ranges. Or tops of ranges uh, and then uh, 
boy, I wish I could find it. I might have to kind of draw an illustration. Um, I mean, we see it all the time. Uh, see if I can find it in a, in a better range. Um, but uh, it, it's really, and these areas here become really important, like kind of pivot areas in here, right? And you can see it, right? This is where we're getting buyers above uh, this range in here where that stop run really picked up down here. So in your range bound trading, if it's a range bound choppy day, you know, you can look for these stop runs and look for buyers back up above it to trade back up into other, test other areas where the sellers came in. And that's what we're looking for uh, in this scenario here. Okay, now if it's going to be a trending day and we get back down below in that area here, then we're looking for sellers to continue the trend 65, 60, uh, and uh, lower liquidity here, maybe 55 and, and 50. And that would be lows of the day, uh, in fact. Yeah, it looks like sellers are going to do that. So this is failing here. We're below, we're back down here. I don't see stop runs down here. Okay, this is new selling coming in. Most of it is new selling. So let's see the new selling pick up again and let's see if they can do it here. Okay, they should be able to drop it and we're, we're starting to trend now. So we're looking for 60. Thanks, Dove. 4470 point of control. Okay. That's what you got. Yeah, let's put that on here. Okay, there we, here's our here's our trend trending move down to 60. Okay, and then I'd be looking for it to trade here at 60 and then a, a, a pretty pretty quick pullback. Let's see if we can get a, a pullback to maybe 63. Okay, next next area was probably around this 55 area. Liquidity is starting to come in there. Yep, I got uh, 4470 as well for point of control. Thanks, Dove. All right. Well. Uh, yeah, I want. I really wanted to cover this point here about these um, about the, some of these days, these tra um, uh, trappy days and uh, uh, market structure here, uh, and, and starting to understand like uh, some range bound uh, trading in here. So because we have the you know these really really nice uh, add-ons here, we've got the uh, stops and icebergs, uh, and we've got the um, uh, uh, the sweeps and absorption indicators. Um, Okay, David, Euro, Euro market's not holding up well. Yield spikes again. Okay. Yeah, looks like we're going to be trending then until the European close, David. Let's let's go with that scenario here. So we're still, we're looking for a lower here, 55. Yeah, thanks, David. That, I, I love it. I mean, uh, that, looking at correlated markets like this and the, and you're over uh, in, uh, in Amsterdam and, and you're looking at uh, uh, European markets, uh, that's a really good indicator. Uh, to look at for uh, uh, you know trend continuations or reversals or whatever uh, we we've, we've been looking at just uh, looking at some of these um, uh, 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 correlated markets here for the stock indexes are they all aligned okay and are they going to start moving together uh, and uh, yeah Nasdaq has the potential here okay to uh, to start to trend here I don't see it trending yet okay but I'm looking for it here. Uh, S and P's all psyched to, to trend as well. It looks like, uh, and so is um, 
uh, the, uh, the Russell here. Now, we got to be careful uh, down into these kind of uh, uh, swings uh, and uh, looking for the order flow, though, to give us some uh, some insight uh, for the uh, sellers to start to come in and we just go with the trend. Okay, it's going to take a while for uh, these markets to turn around here. Okay, if all three are going the same direction. All right, so we're, we're looking for this trend continuation here. We already traded 55. Okay, we're going to get a little bit of a bounce and a pullback here at 55 uh, due to this breakout here and our market structure here. Okay, so here's our pullback already. Okay, where do we look for our pullbacks? I don't know, maybe Alec, if, uh, you know, wh where, what, what kind of areas do we look for for our pullbacks? Okay, we covered this uh, last week in, in uh, one of the um, advanced education uh, webinars. There are certain areas we're looking for in pullbacks. Uh, I do have hero uh, indicator. Uh, I... Previous structure, exactly, exactly. So uh, it, we've already kind of tested it here on the pullback, okay? And uh, it's it looks like it spiked up above it, but uh, we don't know quite yet. Is it going to continue to to pull back here? Um, it the spike above failed so far. So usually we look for the continuation here. Okay, and we'd be looking for now sellers to take it right back down to here, 55 again. These guys, this is where the buyers came streaming in. Okay, and then if we get more sellers there, we should get the move into 50. Right, so here's our pullback, right? And look at our clusters of volume and also the transactions uh, here in the order book. The next level would be up here, okay, this cluster and this this area where they dropped it. Okay, we didn't get we didn't get back up there. Okay, and we're looking for those pullbacks. So we, we're, we're still bearish now. Uh, we flipped uh, and um, uh, we're going with the uh, with the trend. Uh, and now we're looking for uh, the um, uh, continuations here. Okay, until we see something different in here. Now, there, there is a note here. I mean, we should be looking at this here. We're down into this 55 area. Uh, and uh, we do see some buying in here that's not really a low volume pullback. All right, so uh, this is uh, some pretty strong buying in here. Okay, so we might have some back and forth in this area for right now. Okay, so look at look at your bars, how we drew up the bar uh, or the um, uh, pullbacks before. See how this is different? See how we, we really can't draw uh, on the chart here. You know, we can't draw something like that. It's it's like this. So this is where uh, we can see buyers uh, try to pull pull it back more, or even reversals start to take place. So you know, we, we need to we need to see uh, uh, if they if they go for that. Uh, it's starting to turn into kind of range bound trading. All right. Let's see if the sellers can come in right here, 58, and let's see if they move it down to the bottom of this little range, 56. And then maybe they can start to trend. Setting on the bars, uh, yeah, let's go to that. We can right click on the bar, go to the volume bar settings. Okay, solid is what I'm using and uh, a volume delta is what I'm using and I'm using smart clustering that is inherited from my dots. Okay, just click on that. Okay, so these should match basically my dots because my volume dot settings are uh, uh, 3D bubbles and volume delta as well. Okay, and then I just uh, uh, inherited the same setting here for the clustering. All right, so here we are down at this uh, 56 here. Okay, this is going to be do or die for the uh, for the bears. If they want to try to drop it here. Looking for a big red dot then. Nope. Not yet. Okay, buyers starting to come in, Start showing a little bit of interest here. Okay, let's see them move it right back up to the top of the range then. Okay, see how they're starting to, to create a new range in here?
Okay, spike below it. Yeah, I still think we're going to get some buyers down here, to be honest. Uh, and uh, right, right back up here, uh, back to 60. Here's why. Uh, we're looking at the bottom of the range. There's liquidity down here, uh, and, but uh, lots of buying in here, right? So uh, we're kind of in a range-bound environment at from this time frame onward right here, right? So we're kind of looking for this, uh, this move back up into the range in here. Okay, let's see if we get them up here at 57. If we don't and we see sellers, and that's what we're getting, yeah, they're going to drop it then. All right, so sell side still, looking for 50. And that was a tough tough little read in there, I thought. Um, looking for 50, and then let's see if we can get it even to 45 here. Now, we, we're seeing a lot of icebergs now as well, though. Okay, so a lot of iceberg covering in here, and someone had requested icebergs on chart. No problem. Let's take a look at that. Ooh, yeah, nice one. 375, 575. Okay, notice the behavior in 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 the iceberg uh, purchasing here, right? Look look at how they're they're front running this high liquidity at 50. Hey okay, guys, this is a really nice trick uh, by uh, larger players. It might even be their liquidity at 50. That they're front running. Here's two two sixty six five five seven five three three seventy five. All right, and now we just traded into fifty. Okay, and we have a stop run here. Okay, not not a real big one. Okay, we're looking for much much bigger. Okay, anyway. Uh, yep, noticing these large icebergs, so it's back up above fifty is what we're looking for then at that point. Let's see, can you go over icebergs and stops in the bottom? Uh, right, yeah, Alec, uh, you have thinkorswim so you can't see them, right? Uh, that's that's one of the, the problems with the thinkorswim version. Uh, it's it's uh, DX feed data for futures uh, that they're using, uh, and it does not have um, stops and icebergs. Okay, Rhythmic is the only data provider that has it. Yeah. So... Uh, So that's unfortunate. Um, uh, you might want to, oh, you can't even, yeah, you don't even have sweeps and, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, sorry, Alec. Well, I mean, you know, you, you got a heck of a deal, though, over there at Thinkorswim, right? Uh, the data is free, uh, and your book mass 40 bucks. So, uh, yeah, re really, really nice, nice deal. All right, so what are we, we're looking for down here, um, we traded into 50. This is heavy selling in here. We got some icebergs. Okay, this is a low volume pullback here. Okay, unless we get buyers back up above here, right here at 50. Yeah, and here they come. All right, let's see if they can reach 55, 53. Uh, maybe back up here. Uh, we see liquidity starting to come in here, 57, and also 60. And we're back up above we're, we're above our 50 but not on a lot of volume uh, buy volume not at all so if we get down below here 49 and a half we should hit 
our high liquidity here, 40, 46, 45, 43. Okay, we got to break this area right here. And on heavy selling. Let's see it, sellers. You should be able to do it. You've you've got it here. And go to lows of the day. Let's see it. I've got my resets here. Um, I'm going to get rid of that. There we go. Okay. So anyway, guys, this this is what I was kind of you know pointing to, like these really tricky days here. Like uh, this is trending, uh, you know, uh, so that that's that's been nice. Like it's been trending here, but this back and forth in here are these pivot points are just so so essential to understand the order flow around them, uh, right in here. And we're looking for our insights. We're looking for buyers back up above it, and it does not look convincing, right? Uh, we're looking for big you know green dots above it. We don't see it. You know, they, they may, they may come back up here, but we're looking, the most likely scenario is big red dots right here at 50 and for them to take it right back down into this lower liquidity here and then go for lows of the day here, right? So I'm looking for it, uh, looking for those big red dots uh, to continue here, okay? And then back down at 46 for, through 43, maybe back down to 40. Okay, let's see if they can do it here should be able to move it we're looking for them to move it away from this area on selling okay they're down below it but i don't see the selling coming in yet All right this is this is we're we're watching the the volume here okay the liquidity's down there the second stream died really you guys can't uh, connect to that second stream. Uh, let's see. If wonder if you can have custom filters for CVD um, and thinker. So you, the, the CVD should be pretty good um, uh, in there. Uh, Trader Mix Stockster. You. Um, oh, you're gonna switch. Okay, Alex. Uh, Alec, you're gonna switch this week on. Yeah, give it a try. Uh, and uh, you know, see see how you like it. You, I mean, it's yeah. You're gonna have so much more uh, to look at, but you know, it, it comes at a price. Like the, uh, it's pretty nice to have that uh, uh, that data uh, for free. And and it's it's too bad. Like it's just data is so expensive. Um, you know, uh, I think Bookmap is pretty pretty reasonable um, in its in its pricing. Uh, this the. Uh, uh, the data it can really add up. Uh, it depends. If you if you trade just the CME and and maybe uh, Nasdaq and and, and Russell, uh, you can get rhythmic data for I think it's like forty bucks, forty bucks a month, something like that, uh, and that's pretty good. Now, if you trade crude oil and uh, you know, then you have to and, and gold, you have to get that it's like ninety nine bucks a month. Yeah, so that really adds up. All right, let's see if we get our sellers here looking for them right down here 48 don't don't see them yet no in fact we're getting buyer we're getting the opposite buyers at the top of the range here Okay, a few icebergs, not many. Okay, all right, so back up to uh, a 55 here. And let's see if we can get some rejection here. Back down into the range here. And some selling. So we'd be looking at this scenario here. No, we're back up above it.
Okay, sellers should be able to retest back down here to 51. Now, did we get a stop run? We did. Okay, so here we go. Here we, we have our stop run above the range here. All right? Boy, it's not like one of these stop runs, though. That's what we're really looking for. One of these massive, this is over 1,000 here, 1,200. Over 1,200 uh, in this area here. And then 100, another 165 down here. Right, that's a that's a real stop run. Uh, so you know this this gets to that that question here. Like uh, kind of, this is a much bigger picture look at it here. Uh, above 55, you get buyers back up above 55, right? We we can have a really nice move back up to point of control, back up to 70. We get a, we can get like a, a a 20 point move here. So let's let's see if we get that. Um, and we'll, we're going to look at the order flow to give us some insight for these different scenarios here. Okay, They're, they are buying. They're buying more. All right, so here's nice buying here. Uh, and I don't see a stop run. Okay, uh, so uh, let's see if they can get a little bit more here. Boy, it's not... They weren't, they weren't even able to make a higher high here, though, on that, that buying. All right, so let's just see if we can get it up here. Uh, not looking too good. I mean, the, the clusters are good. We're back up above a, another range in here. Okay, right in here. Uh, looking for buyers back up here if we can get them. Uh, and we could get a really nice reversal here, uh, if possible. Uh, and boy, I mean, one thing we've learned, um, uh, you know, uh, about these kind of mean reversion traders. And uh, oh yeah, I, I left off uh, with a um, um, it was uh, Alan asking about mean reversion and what that means, uh, the significance of it. The um, you know, it, it, it's kind of all over the map. I mean, like, uh, what what exactly does mean reversion uh, uh, mean as a strategy? Usually, like, to a moving average or VWAP. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, any any kind of average, uh, basically, okay, and a reversion back to it. So, yeah, also, like, a, you know, a, a highly traded level uh, can also be, uh, uh, you know, back to, uh, uh, you know, some sort of um, average. Okay, we're getting we're getting our buyers now we're getting our buyers back up above it here but look at the buying in here is it that strong eh, it's not bad it's not bad all right let's see if they can do it then see if we can get a bounce off of this right here here's our pullback already and no Okay, all right, we're back down now. Wide open door here for sellers to 45 and 40. Wide open door. Okay, they, they've got control here if they want to take it right here because we're below our, our line here, right? This There's buyers above it, uh, and now we've got some selling down below it here. Okay, now we're looking for that directional move to continue. All right, so let's see if our sellers show up here. Looking for them here, and we should get a pretty nice move back down to, I think, 45 uh, liquidity here, and uh, also 40. Here they go, and let's see them go for it. All right, so it, our level here that we're looking for the order flow around is right here. Okay, this uh, 40, uh, 53 area. Boy, another ton of icebergs here. Looks like it.
Okay, sellers should have it here. Let's see, 47, 45, and 40. Hit it, sellers. Should be able to hit it here. And they are bidding up here, but it's still it's still looking for these sellers to hit it. Okay, there's 47. Still looking for the continuation for 45. You know, the, these are our areas where we're looking for the sellers to take it. This is where the liquidity is. Okay, it's already traded some here. At, did, now, did they transact here at 47? Some of it did, yeah. Got some icebergs in there as well. Boy, it's being really, really kind of touchy in here. Back down below these areas, buyers come streaming right back in. Well, we got down to 47. That was it, down to this swing here. And buyers came streaming right back in to trade it back to our, our level here, our 53. We're still below 53, though. Okay, we, we, you know, here, here we go. We're, we have to kind of flip-flop back and forth yet again in here. See, see how we got selling down here and look at where the buying came back in. Okay, I think, uh, point, uh, David, I think it was you. I, we, we had pointed this out. Like, uh, um, uh, it's, it's the volume and the, the, the um, uh, 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 context here. Look at the selling here and look at the buying back up above it. Okay, so uh, uh, we want to see the selling here. We want to see no volume back up above it, maybe to test back up to here where they dropped it from, and then that's it. Uh, we're not looking for uh, uh, buyers here uh, to come back in here. Uh, if they do, then, yeah, we're looking for back to top of the ranges here. All right. so again, this, this is uh, that, that this structure here is what we want to look at in that context here. It's tricky. It's really tricky here. Typically, we this is a, uh, a move down. We look for the low volume pullback and the continuation here. Okay, uh, didn't do it. Uh, we're right back up into, and now we're even above our line here, right? So this has become uh, a, an important for this little uh, time frame right now. This is an important area here at 53, and we're looking for the order flow around it here. Uh, not seeing too much in the order book to give us uh, much insight here. Uh, we see the um, uh, liquidity at the at the uh, extremes here, uh, 58 and 60, also down here 48, you know, and, and lower. Yeah, Hazard, the, the sweeps indicator is really, really nice indicator. It's, uh, uh, you know, there's a Moby, uh, Mobster 16, and uh, uh, one of our um, uh, uh, moderators in there had uh, pushed for that. Uh, once it was, we had it before, it was just all combined into the, what we called the absorption indicator. Uh, and he, he wanted to look at um, both of them, uh, you know, absorption and sweeps together. Uh, so we had to like kind of lift it out of there. And and this is where you, I'll show you where you can find it. But, uh, you know, go to our knowledge base, but you can see there's um, absorption indicator and a sweeps indicator here. They're separate. And look at them here. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you guys what they uh, uh, look like here. The settings up here. See how the sweeps shows within a time frame how much volume traded at at a minimum number of price levels. Okay, uh, that's what you're looking for in the sweeps. So it sweeps a number of price levels. Okay, the difference between the absorption indicator is it just doesn't have the price levels in here. So it's at one price level only. That's really the only difference. Uh, so uh, uh, you know, just that little, uh, 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 you know, check of the box here for minimum price levels will give you the sweeps, right? Uh, and uh, start to look for sweeps above like this right here, you know, sweeps above a range, okay? And then if we can get back down below that range and we have a stop run here, we have icebergs in here, we're looking for sellers to come in on the other side of this and trade it back down to 53, this is the kind of tricky action we've been seeing. 
it's like like this down here is also a stop run here okay and then uh, uh and then back up above the uh the area here back up into the range okay so here we go let's see if we get these uh our buyers going to support this here or our seller is going to take it down from here okay we have we have stops and sweeps we have icebergs i'd be looking for the move back to 53. okay there's some selling here they should be able to move it right now and they don't buyers support it okay so now if buyers support it they're going to come right back to 58 and 60 here so i'm looking for that move now okay it's all around these little areas in here we're looking for the order flow okay now we got buyers back up here we're back up to the top of the range here and now i want to see them break the range though Okay, back to the bottom of the range again. Okay, now we get our move. Okay, all right, so we're back here. Okay, we're back into our kind of uh, small little point of control here. Now, can we get heavy selling now at this point to move back down to the bottom of the range here? And they're going to go for it. All right. So let's see if they let's see them hit 47 again. Okay. That would be low of this cash session. I'm sorry. Yeah, of the cash session. Yes. Tricky, tricky moves. Okay. But uh, range bound trading is. Uh, um, I, I find it to be rather tricky. But we're looking for who who's on the hook basically uh, in some of these areas here. You know that's why we look for the stop run and then the move back up above the stop run, right? And then for for buyers to come charging right back in and just kind of um, you know move back to the other side of the range after the stop run. So this is a false breakdown so far in this little area here. Okay, now, now it might turn into a full breakdown. Let's see. Okay, right here, this is where the sellers need to take it down. And looks like they're going to do it. The order book, see how they're pulling here in the order book? I'm looking for the sellers. They should be able to come in. They've they've got this. Uh, the one thing we don't like is that the, on the other side of the order book, it's dark here. That means buyers can easily move it back up here, right? Uh, that's why we look for a skew in the order book. We look for them to pull this liquidity up at 55 and add it down below. See, see how they, 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 it's easy for buyers to move it back here. Okay, we look for, let's see if we can get it here. Let's see if we can get, now we're back here. Now we're not above it. Let's see if the order book here shows a skew in the auction. And let's see them pull down here. I want to see them pull. Okay, they are adding, see the blue coming in here? So they're starting to add in, but as price is coming up, they're pulling. So they don't want to be sellers. Okay, this is where we're getting to the, the nuances in the order flow here. Okay, now they're actually pulling at 55. Yeah, sweeps. I, I can explain um, the, uh, the the sweeps. Okay, testing the IB low. Uh, thanks, David. What is, what is an order book sweep? Um, and um, Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm going to take that into this. This is kind of where I wanted to go uh, originally with this um, uh, this webinar here uh, was going from market a micro structure into bigger structure. OK, and how to how to read that and then how to extrapolate that to even here our higher time frame. Right. Oh, God, this is just pretty, pretty. 
pretty ugly. The move down below and then just hacking around down here uh, on this five minute. Just a, just a pretty ugly little tight little range in here. All right, well, let's just zoom in here. Let's, let's check it out. Um, all right, there's our skew in the order book. Do we get sellers? No, we got buyers. They took it on. Do we get buyers back up above it? If we do, they should hit 54. Let's see. They should go for it here. Let's see it, buyers. You got to show up, though. They have to show up here. If they don't, sellers will come in on the other side. Okay, this is the area we're looking at here, 51 and a half. The order flow around that area if we get sellers down below, they're going to take it now. They're going to take it down to 48, 47. Here we go. Now we got to move. Okay, there's 47. Looking for more. Looking for 45. Let's zoom in here. Okay. Strong move, strong selling. Lots of icebergs. There it is. Okay, there's now there is a sweep and a stop. Uh, stop run. Okay, here's our, our order book sweep. See the, the, the purple uh, squares there? Even another one here. Wow. Wow. Okay, we're down at 43. Okay, now we're going to look at this area here at 47 and a half. Okay, if buyers can come back up above that area here. Okay, that's where the big sweep or the big stop run took place. Okay, pretty big. Four, 500 almost. All right, so let's mark it up. Oops. Okay, sellers, hit it. Let's see if you can hit it again. They're pulling on the order in the order book. Sellers have it open here for them. Skew in the auction. Nothing. Nothing yet. Okay, there's a skew in the auction now. The order flow here, they 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 took them on. Uh, high liquidity on the uh, on the offer here, uh, and buyers took them on. Now we need to get buyers back up above it. Here they go. All right, buyers should be able to take this back to forty or forty-seven and maybe forty-nine here. Our forty-seven level, forty-seven and a half, is where we drop from. That's where that sweep took place and that uh, stop run took place. Okay, looking for a test back to it now. Okay, and then here we go on the bid. All right, so they sh let's see if we can get back up to 49 now. Okay, looking for it. Okay, and then back up to 51. This is where they dropped it from. Okay, there's our move to 49-ish, one tick away. Okay, so we're looking for a move back up into the range here. Okay, yeah, I, I like 50 uh, and, and 51 in here. Okay, scenario one, D due to the stop run here in the sweep. Okay, we've got to get back up above it, you know, above this, uh, this line here. If we don't and we see the sellers come in, which is what they are doing, we're going to get our continuation. And now we're going to get our buyers 49. And they're going to be searching for stops as well. So where? We got to get they got to they're going to be up here at 53, our 53 line here. So let's see if we can get a skew on the bid and we get our buyers in here, we should get a nice move back up into these areas here. Okay? We need to see that bid here. Or this here we're going to get some insight right here. Okay, we found some buyers to take on the sellers. Did they were they able to get above it though? No. All right. Come on, buyers, let's see if you can get back up here. We'd love to see it. 
no we got some exhaustion here let's see if we get some selling selling if they can just show up here and let's end this uh, Euro european session here on on the downside here let's see if they can do it they've got it i mean the, now we're now we're down below here we're, we're looking for them to continue like uh th this this is failing up here and, and we're back down below it uh you know you know we're, we're reading the order flow around these levels here Okay, we, if we can get this, see the high liquidity up in these areas here, they're not down here. Buyers can easily trade it right back to 47. Okay, this is how to, you know, look at and understand the the the, uh, the order book in here. In fact, we, let's take volume off for a minute uh, and, uh, and just look at the order book. Okay, see how they start to come in here and we get we get some uh, some selling coming in. Okay, we have a stop run as well. Okay, let's take off the volume. Let's take off our. Uh, um, so we're going to go look at the um, just the order book. Okay, because it, it's 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 been giving us some pretty good insight when when we get it. Okay, there's some uh, some high liquidity, and uh, let's see if we get buyers back up above it though. They should be able to reach right back to 45 here. Okay, a little more there see see them on the bid here should be able to reach 45 46 maybe 47 now they're showing up okay we're looking for this liquidity to transact see now even more here see how they're pulling here we're still looking for higher still looking for higher see how they're pulling even more here and they're adding more here there's our 47 move they're even even more they're still pushing it here okay so you know the order book can can help so much here uh, in understanding like where price might go it's not all about traded volume there's the other side of the trade here okay now let's see if we're we're back at our 47 and a half and we're we're above it we're back up in it wow that's a really quick move all right, I was going to say, like, if we can get back up above it, we're back to our 53 line is what we're looking for, our 53 line up here. Okay, high liquidity here at, at 52, it, that just, just traded some of it, it looks like. Not much, but it looks like some of it traded. Okay, 237 up here. Okay, now, what do we see now? Not not much, not much. We're, we're between high, areas of high liquidity in here. Uh, here we go a little bit on the bid here all right they're staying in the book too so we should be able to transact into 52. see how they're staying in here looking for them to push it to 52. now nah, see we're getting a, a, a flip there and they're pulling here at 49. okay was looking good in here for 52 right in here due to this liquidity adding into the book looking this is the, the the target here 52 and then they they came in here and they're pulling here so these guys don't really want to buy here on this pullback and look where they are in terms of the structure okay right right in that area here all right here we go high liquidity on the, on the bid here and we're below it Yeah, no, nothing, nothing shaking right now. Don't see anything. It's kind of dark around both areas here. This is a tough. This is a tough session. <laughs> we, we we know we'll all be at high all, all time highs by the end of the session. <laughs> yeah, thanks, uh, K K Bowie.
uh, based on, I, sorry, uh, logic, I don't understand your question. Yeah, yeah, Tom, uh, volatility back and forth in here. Boy, you had some really tough sessions um, and those afternoon sessions, very, very tricky. Well, anyway, I mean, it's the like, like we've been saying, you know, the 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 order flow is is what is going to give us some insight here. And like right now, well, we don't have that insight. Like we we're not getting much from this order book at the moment. I mean, they're they're offering down a little bit lower here now that now they're bidding up, and, and it's a battle. I mean, look at the battle unfolding here, and we're not we don't know we we, we they're they're on the bid now here, and they look to be buyers but sellers are taking them on and, and then they pull so we're getting really a lot of conf confliction in here of trying to read this and get it get get kind of an edge here if we don't have an edge you just don't trade um you know we're looking for that edge if it doesn't provide an edge like it's just you know at our levels then you know we we just we shy away from it you know this uh, uh it'll keep you out of these really tricky um sessions in here Okay, now we get a little liquidity on the on the offer here. Now we get sellers here. Okay, so they're likely going to go back to our 47 level. Okay, and push it. Okay, maybe 46. Maybe they can get below it here as well. Uh, let's look for even a pullback. What about the opposite scenario? Do they come in on the in the order book here, and we get to move back to 51? Right. See how the you can see this order book kind of guides price, uh, and uh, you know you you look for um, a lot of times it's very very balanced, and you're looking for that when it's out of balance. Okay, and how does price react to it? So there's some liquidity here at 49. See at 49 and a half there. Okay, looking for sellers. Okay, that was a quick quick little move, but now. Looking for them to take it to 47. Liquidity's down here. Okay, they're still here at 49, 49 and a half, and we're finding some sellers. So they should be able to take it a little bit lower here. 47, 46. Okay, now now I don't like it though. Like uh, uh and here's why. I was just about to say, like uh uh, now, now they're we're down in this area here. We hit 47. Okay, they're kind of staying in the book here, and it's dark in here. They're not following down. When they follow down like this, we we get some insight. Price is moving. It's rep this is repelling price. Okay, they came in it came in here. It was dark in here first. Okay, in this area here, uh, we hit our area of liquidity at 47. And then look at this guy come in here, one 120. Excuse the order book entirely, right? The most in the in this view, the most in this view, and one player has about 50 of those contracts. Okay. Also, some of these other areas in here. See the skew. So we're looking for a move right back to these these previous areas of high liquidity. Now it happened really quickly, but look at how what they're doing in here as well. They pulled here, and look, they're already starting to pull here. Okay. So we tested a 47 and a half. The order book is it. We got a big skew here, okay, and they're pulling up in these areas. So first area is we're looking for a trade up into kind of top of the range here and this liquidity in here, okay. Now if we can get back up above it, uh, or uh, you know they're pulling here, and uh, maybe they're adding in the book. Let's see. Now we haven't seen this yet, right? We don't know. Okay. Now are they adding in the book? Yeah, and we got the move up here, and okay, they're adding now in the book here, and now they're pulling. Okay, so at least we got this move here up to here. Let's see if we get what what other insights do we get here?
Okay, there's high liquidity here at 49. Now these guys are pulling at 50. Okay, we should get the move. If they if they're not going to trade with these guys at 49, and we got we got buyers in here and they're pulling up here, we're looking for now fifth back to 50 and a half, maybe 52, 52 and a half. And it looks like they transacted. Okay, now same scenario here. Now 49. Do they do they show up in the order book here at 49? Not really. Not really. They're pulling at 50 and a half. Okay, it's starting to show up down here at 49. It's dark up here. 52 is the next area. Okay, more in here in the book. Let's see if it, let's see if we can get to 52. Or pull back to 49 here, but uh Okay, yeah, 52. All right, let's get back to the current market and get to this European close. Uh, we, well, we're up at 58. God, I, I hate I hate demoing stuff when we miss the moves. Um, sorry about that. Does that make that make sense? Uh, sense a uh, logical about starting to understand order book and and the auction here. Now that that little uh, exercise. This is actually what I wanted to cover. Um, was, uh, uh, you know, starting to understand the order book here, but then we're going to extrapolate that to much bigger time frames. Okay, so now the bigger time frame is we just traded up into high high liquidity here at 60 and 58. Okay, now are they doing the same thing? The same ideas here. Okay, are they starting to support it here? If not, and they're, they're on the offer here and they're adding more in maybe? Okay, well, actually, no, they're, they're starting to add more here. Now, how does price react to this? They should be able to trade up to 63. Should be able to trade up to 63. Now see them pull at 63 and see them adding in here. Okay, now we'd get maybe a quick move back here and maybe they pull that liquidity, but we're seeing the reaction in the order book, so we're looking for 63. Okay, we're just looking at two, two uh, elements here and we're just trying to get an, an edge here by understanding the auction. Okay. Now, we, like I said, we can move that out and to look at much, much higher time frames and still get that edge. It doesn't matter. Let me, let me, uh, let me take the stops and icebergs off for a moment here. Okay. Uh, now we're looking at our other, our higher time frame levels, back to 70. Okay. This is a nice move. This is a European close, guys. Uh, they're going to continue to move it on up. Uh, looks like this. These are the kind of moves we've seen at the close lately. Very tricky reading here uh, during the uh, the session, and then the close we get these nice moves, or after the close, in fact, um, uh, last uh, last few days. Okay, here liquidity on the bid, and uh, they're supporting it at this high level here. Liquidity on the offer is up at 68 and 70. Okay, let's see if we can get our move. See, it's kind of balanced right now between this kind of 62-ish and, and, and 68. Okay, more liquidity starting to come in here. And see, see how sellers took them on? That was different. That was different behavior here. They started to come in with a little bit more liquidity in here. And, and then the sellers went for it right in here. And the sellers, uh, they they wanted it, right? So uh, that now that's something a little different, right? Now there now we have high liquidity here on the offer, and then pulling on the bid. So let's see them reach down to 60. Okay, our 60 level looks pretty good. It's dark down here. Sellers can bring it down here pretty quickly. Okay, let's see what the reaction is. More liquidity here on the uh, on the offer. No, we're not getting it. Uh, at these lower levels here. We want to see them kind of skew it in here. Now we're balancing between liquidity at 60 and 65. Okay, and we're right in the middle. Okay, they're pulling down here. Okay, we should get the move to 60. And that's that was a pretty easy read, but like uh um okay. Now let's see if they add in a little bit more and pull here and look for move right back up to 64. Right back up, 64, uh, 65. OK, 
Okay, they're staying in the book here. That's good. Okay, there, there's our skew. Okay, now they're trading too. They're starting to trade into them. And this is tricky at the close as well. We're going to see some pretty big transactions in these areas here. Okay, so now sh we don't get them. They should be up, they should be able to trade back up here, 64. Well, now, now they're now they're transacting, so we get a quick move and then and then quick uh, to to trade back into it. So they looks like they took them on. And we don't know. We don't have the volume, but uh, uh, we're still back up above it. Okay, we get a little skew here on the bid. Let's see. I mean, these guys they wanted at the close. They want that liquidity. Is this? We know that they this determined that right here. So they show that liquidity. They want it. They went for it. Okay, so if we get a skew on the auction here on the offer. I, I bet we'll trade right here we go let's see 63 right here let's see looking for them now to trade down to 60 there there's a little bit more should be able to hit it okay here's why here's why we read this context in here okay now it, it, it may seem like this is kind of advanced stuff but it, and nuanced, but it, it's, it's really just understanding the auction uh, and understanding the context in here. Well, here we are at the close of the uh, uh, European session. Uh, we have high liquidity in here that they bumped it up here and they started to transact into it. And we, and we thought, well, we're going to get a bump back up into 64, right? Because they're, they're above it here. Uh, then they took them on here. Right, so they wanted that liquidity, uh, and then it, it kind of bounced around in here. So we're going through a few different scenarios in here. Now, if they pull, uh, um, I'm sorry, if they add lower in here, uh, and they started to in here, then we know that the sellers are interested in that liquidity. So all, they're going to get a little bit of a push here. Well, then they should be able to trade back down here. Right, so they they did, uh, and then uh, you can see what happened now. Uh, the, the buyers started to come in and they lift that liquidity in these areas. They did not transact in here. Maybe a little bit in here and maybe a little bit in here. But you see them pulling in here and we're moving higher. So now we're looking again for 70. Okay. So we're just reading the order book here and the reaction to that order book. Okay, Starting to bid up here. There's our answer. They're pulling as well. Start, they're going to do it more. They're going to push it right up into 70 here. Right? It's, 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 it's kind of guiding us. It's telling us this is where they want to trade, 70. Okay, there's another, another push here at, at 67, high liquidity here at 67. Does that make sense? You, do you guys, uh, th this is kind of, um, you know, a really nice um, edge here or feature in Bookmap of reading just the order book. Uh, you know, a lot of other uh, um, the, uh, software, it, it, they don't, they don't have this, and it's just so important. And, and you'll hear a lot of traders talk about uh, this is, um, oh, it's all fake liquidity anyway. I mean, you know, I could point to like many academic papers by financial engineers who make algos. They make, they're, they're building algos based on the order book okay? and, and the trading. But is it, the order book is a massive part of, uh, here's our 70 level, okay? And still trading up a, a little bit higher here. Right, so uh, uh, it does matter. Uh, so uh, you do see how, it, I mean, it just makes complete sense. I mean, it's an auction. 
Does that does that make sense? So uh, yeah, let me know, let me know what you think. I mean, I'm I'm I'd be happy to. We can review it again if you like. No, no questions. Okay. I mean, you know, it's um, it's something that uh, uh, is kind of foreign to a lot of traders when they first start looking at bookmap, because they've never had this this view, and being being able to understand it. The view has been mostly and and luck, lucky if this the, actually the view is actually mostly. I'll, I'll show you what it is. Um, it is the view is actually uh, this and maybe you have volume down here and you're trying to understand order flow around these things there's there's nothing in these there's no information in these right yeah bookmap works with trade of eight So uh, anyway, now the next the next step, and now this has been pretty, you know, it's a good one. It's a really good one. The next step uh, in in software visualization here was going into um, uh, uh, footprint charts or market delta charts, which are good. What do they show? They show the volume in here. So it's kind of like turning on the volume dots, basically. Okay. So now you have your candlestick, but you have the volume. Okay, so let's actually take the volume or the candlestick off here uh, because we have the dots now. Uh, and um, uh, now we're understanding volume within structure. Okay, this is market structure. And okay. tricky stuff in here too. Uh, you know, we, we thought we had our move back down into 40 uh, and lower here. Uh, and, um, uh, and then the buyers came in back up. And this is where they broke it. Now, hindsight's easy. Right, pretty strong move. Pull back, pretty strong move. Uh, but um, uh, the uh, reading it in real time here, like boy, it was tricky in some of these areas in here. Uh, and um, uh, now we 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 got the uh, we we saw the trending move uh, and looking for that trend to continue. Uh, but then uh, you know started to see, whoa, hold on a minute, we got some buyers starting to show up in here. Maybe we got it. Nope. Sellers take it one more time. Now buyers are back up, and now they're moving it back up into these areas. At the end of the close, European close, right in here. So this is something to consider, you know, to look for the order flow and timings here. Uh, but uh, anyway, what I'm, I'm digressing here. What I was talking about was uh, starting to um, uh, understand the um, volume now, right, and price structure or best bid and offer here. Uh, and uh, can't your uh, market delta charts can show that, uh, but you still don't have the other side of the trade. You don't you don't know where the buyers and sellers are. Where is that supply and demand? Uh, and then that's that's what we we uh, went through in this exercise here uh, to get some some clarity in that. Like how is that affecting price? Right. So we just looked at best bid and offer uh, and uh, uh, the order book. Okay. And starting to understand that. Okay. We can weave the volume in later. Uh, like here, here we go. Like uh, we're we just traded into 72, and we traded through it, back to 70 here. Okay. Well, here's liquidity at 72. The book kind of flipped a little bit, right? It's not a really great book flip, but uh, it would be wonderful to see if this was like very high liquidity in here. Now, if there is, now see the high liquidity came in here. Now, what did the it it see how this this is short term high liquidity? See how it attracted traders. And look at the offer now. They should be able to hit 67. Right? I'd be looking for them to hit 67 and a half here. Now that's starting to flip itself as well. Yeah, that's that's flipping. Right? So yeah, we have to have to flip really, really quickly on that. It's the opposite. They're starting to show on the bid and, and we're starting to find buyers here. So back to 73 is Boy, it's it's tricky now, at the end of the end of the uh, European close here. Let's see if the buyers take these guys on. See, it it's um not giving us too much at the moment. 
Okay, we thought we had a nice little read in here. They're going to pull. They're adding here. We should get the drop. Okay, it's just back to point of control, though. Seventy-two is VWAP. Okay. Yeah, so we got our VWAP and our point of control very close together within a two-point range. Yeah, this is going to be some really some bouncing around in here, I bet. Uh, all right, let me get to a few questions here. Okay, uh, yeah, you want to look at hero? Sure. All right, that's another another context. Now, the, the hero indicator, uh, again, order flow is what rules. Okay. Uh, it, it's just how the market works. We look at these other uh, confluences that have an effect on price uh, and then start to put those pieces together as well, like our stops, our icebergs, uh, our um, whatever it might be, it, looking at different markets, right? Different correlated markets. Uh, so let's look at the hero. I'll put in a thousand. Okay, so we have a, a thousand here, a thousand here, here as well. Yeah, from what I've played around with it, like I do not like seeing the buying at the top of the range um, at all. In fact, uh, when I see that in the hero, I, I look to see if we can get down below those areas here and then get a, a move back down to 65 or 60, uh, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I, I, to see large volume um, or, or, you know, hero um, uh, indicators or indications up in these areas here. Um, yeah, it could move. I mean, if it's, uh, uh, you know, we, we, this is the event and we'd look for the order flow yet again around the, around this event. At the end of these moves, though, I do not like to see it at, at the top. In fact, I'd love to see like the 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 hero sell indicator here uh, show up for like two thousand uh, on the sell side here. Then I'd be looking for that move back down lower, uh, sixty-eight, and then maybe sixty down here. Well, that's just one way to read it. Um, so, yeah, you know, look, look at the order book guys here again. Let's read this context yet again. Okay, pretty high liquidity in here. Uh, and uh, do buyers take them on or not? Are they going to tangle with these guys? Okay, they are a little bit. Now he's starting to pull. Okay. Now, can we get buyers above it? And can they go for these guys now up here at 74? You know, a, a lot of uh, a lot of the uh, algos um, look for. Uh, well, I know that there's these strategies to look for. Um, when you start to understand the 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 um, balance in the order book in here, like you know, basically down here at 70, and we're trying to get back up above 70 here, then and and we have it at 74. So we're just looking for a move to 72, right? That that would be kind of a balance in the order book, is back up a move back to 72. Okay, that's another way to look at this uh, information here. Now, I know that's kind of a scalp, uh, but we can look at higher time frame stuff too. Right? You'll see you'll see these moves in here like like right now, well here's a skew. Okay? So here here we have at 74. Well, that's what we were just looking at in fact. Uh, the skew though, it was at 77 and then also down here at 70. So it was a 7 point range. Now we got a skew. Okay, they moved down. Okay, what's the reaction? What what do what do buyers and sellers do in here? Buyers are going for it. They want that 74. There they go, and they flip. Okay, so then now our our range here is 73 on up to 77. So I'm looking for something in the middle here, or end end of the or you know the 77 level here. Okay, does that make sense? Let me let me just uh, mark it up here. I I'm going through a lot of different things in here. Uh, with this order book just the order book here so here's our range okay and then here's our bigger range right previously 
Okay, just by just on, based on the order book. In fact, let me let me uh, let me do this here. Um, I am going to uh, go to heat map settings uh, and really skew it here. Uh, actually, let's go back to default and just I'll just skew that one. All right. Okay, so so uh, yeah, here, here we go. So this was our range in here, and then we had the skew in here. All right, well they should be able to hit uh, 69 here. No, they didn't. They they uh, they traded in, or some traded here, and then they pulled. So now we're in a different range. In fact, here. Okay, this little range. So look for a. You can look for a mean reversion, which would be this area here. Okay, I know this is getting messy here. Um, let me let me get rid of this one for a moment, just to make this point. I, I just think you guys will find this really helpful here. Um, so uh, and understanding the order book because it it really really can can help, uh, and it can help on the higher time frames. It doesn't have to be low time frames here. And see how they're pulling here. Now we're looking for the move back to. The bigger range here. Well, if it's already done it um, here, but uh, the bigger range is now up to 80. Now, where's so we're between 68 and 80. Okay, well, there's there's 80, right? Okay, so now where's the range now? It was way up here, 4,500. You know, and don't see anything else really significant in here. Uh, 68 and and 4,500. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at that. Okay, where's our midpoint? 82. Okay, I don't see any high liquidity in there at 82, but if we get our buyers in here and we get a skew in the order book underneath here like this, I'm looking for 82. Okay. You, you'll, you'll see how the, this uh, uh, this works out. Here, here the, now they're starting to come in at 82. See them coming in? Okay, looking for the move to 82. Okay, what if we get another skew in the order book here? Underneath, here's our range. I mean, we're just right in the middle of it right now. Okay, or is this the new range down here? A move down to 74, 75 here. 75, 76. Okay, here's 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 some high liquidity coming in here, and we found found a little bit of buying here. All right, let's see if they stay in the order book, and then we should be able to trade back up into 82. Uh, they're pulling. Okay, new range. Yeah, not really seeing too much right now. Anyway, guys, just wanted to go through that um, uh, in this order book here. I'm starting to understand uh, how price reacts to that order book. Okay, high liquidity coming in here, 77 or 77 and a half level. And okay, that was an important level earlier. Okay, do it, what's the reaction here? Okay, they're adding more in here, 77. All right, well, then then balance should be down here. Okay, if we get sellers coming in, this is the first area I'd look for them to go is probably right here at 73 and a half, and there it is. All right. 
So let's see um, what causes dots or bars to print. Uh, this is not tick. This is not tick data. Uh, this is uh, uh, just you know uh, complete um, uh, com complete data in here. And what I mean by that is not packaged and and, and shipped out um, like uh, like tick data is uh, at all. Uh, that's a big distinction between us and, and other uh, other heat maps out there. Re really big. Uh, here, here's why. Let me let me put the the uh, volume back on, and then I think we'll wrap it up. I didn't even get to like what I wanted to cover here uh, today was like extrapolating from a microstructure to macrostructure. Um, but we can do it maybe next week. Um, uh, the uh, um, you know being able to understand some of these smaller little levels and then how it can move into bigger levels. Uh, really good good understanding of uh, uh, you know. Uh, how important it is, how the markets work, how what, what's making the markets move. Uh, we've been going over the order book, though, and its influence uh, on price. Like it, it technically cannot make price move. It can stop price from moving. Uh, but you, as you guys can see, like price reacts to the order book, uh, you know, um, immediately. So, uh, you know, we can look at spoofing and, and that kind of activity as well. Um, the... Um, uh, what was I going to say here? The um, and why I brought the uh, volume dots back on. There was a question here. I think um, oh yeah, about the tick data. That's right. So here, like, you know, we're looking at every single transaction, okay, in Bookmap. Um, but you'll see even 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 within some of these areas of the transaction, if I put the heat map on. Um, uh, You'll see how there are order book updates in here, okay, that are not where there's no transactions at all. Like there's all sorts of order book updates in here, right? And there's no transactions. So price is going, just going sideways here, nothing happening, but the order book is updating, right? And uh, you'll see tick data will not do that. Uh, you'll see the update here. With the transaction, another transaction, and the order book updates. A okay, big, big distinction. Uh, that's why we can see, like you know, these these, and we can read the order book and use that to our edge here, our advantage, uh, to start to see like what's happening um, in that order book uh, to give us uh, uh, insight here uh, uh, to where price might be going next. It, you you know, you can really see the details in here. Okay, now, or if, if you want to zoom out and you don't want to look at those details, that's that's fine as well. Okay, here's our skew, another skew in the order book here. Pretty high liquidity on the bid, so let's see them test up here to, uh, they seem to be interested. Now we're right right back, uh, well, you know, it made it to the midpoint. Right now let's see if we can get another skew in here. Now, you, you know, you guys will see this a lot as well, like um, during um, uh, end of moves. Uh, you'll see a lot of this. It's 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 fascinating to see uh, how you know you, end of moves they they continue to skew that order book and it, it's it's like a spoof. Uh, uh, but um, I mean you see it at, at the end of just about every move. Uh, you'll you'll see it like um, how price will be uh, uh, moving up and up and up toward an area of very high liquidity, uh, and then they come in at the you know the last uh, uh, kind of minute or you know, few minutes and really narrow that auction with very high liquidity on the offer. Okay, and uh, and then you get the push up into that high liquidity. Let me sh let me see if I can if I can find an example. Um, yeah, I mean it just it it happens all the time. Uh, pretty pretty typical behavior. You know, if they need it, if they need it, they may need, may not need it. That's why, you know, we got to read the reaction to it. Like, uh, yeah, maybe uh, like so some of these areas, it's not a really good example uh, in here. I mean, you really want to see high, very high liquidity. Uh, so let me see. Uh, and then uh, I've got to go. Um, nice move here. Look at that. In the order book. Yeah, I don't see a really good example here today. Uh, 
maybe this here um, would be boy probably the closest to it uh, yeah not not a real good example today but you'll just see it like uh, maybe in also the stocks we can take a look at maybe uh, uh, some stocks in here yeah I don't I don't really see it really really high liquidity underneath here just to push it and get it up and filled up into this uh these areas here anyway um yeah I, i've got to go and then uh, i'll turn it over to tom uh yeah he'll be he'll be streaming um uh, pretty soon so uh, uh let me just get to your questions guys and then we'll we'll wrap it up and call it a day here i've been going way over my limit here all right look at the strong move here um looking for 80 looking for a skew let's see if we get that skew underneath here and then looking for it not only 80 uh, if they can pull at 80, we've got a different skew, right? Okay, so looking for high liquidity under here, 76. Let's see it, 76. And then if what if they pull at 80, right? Then we have a new scenario here. If we get high liquidity here and they pull at 80, okay, the new zone is is up here. We'd look for the move back to 81 uh, and maybe 85, okay? 81 is the midpoint of this square, as you can, you can see the three dots there, uh, horizontal in the midpoint. Okay, but we didn't we didn't get it. We didn't get that high liquidity here on the bid. Okay, and then pulling. There we go. There it is. Okay, 81. Looking for it. 80. Well, sh we're almost there. Like 82. Let's let's get to 83. Okay, here here's our new skew still looking for 83 okay pretty pretty high probability there's another skew 80 okay looking for 84 83 84 and we did get to 83 okay new auction anyway guys all right um Let's take a look here, uh, a few questions, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, thinkorswim, you, you'll get you get the toss. Uh, you have to go through thinkorswim for that. Okay, they've integrated it within their thinkorswim platform. Uh, Bari, uh, some of the things there that um, uh, the... Um, uh, yeah, we've we've trained them all over there. I mean, they they know exact they know Bookmap very well, uh, so they should be able to help you. Uh, MBO is that's the MBO can be found on uh, the marketplace Bookmap marketplace. Okay, you can go to uh, uh, Bookmap.com. Uh, and then under the more button, you'll see a move to or the, a link to the marketplace in there. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't get MBO on on toss. Yep, exactly. Uh, CVD filters. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. You wanted to go over that. Um, uh, CVD uh, filters, etc. And I, I see your image there. Um, Xdoxer, reach out to support. I can help you out there. Um, but uh, yeah, it does it does look like uh, you? I from from what I recall, their their CVD was pretty pretty good. Um, you know, you you could do a lot of filtering. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'll leave that one uh, for now. Yeah, thanks guys. Um yeah, have a good weekend. Uh, I'll turn it over to Tom. He'll get he'll get streaming in here. Um tough tough uh, little session um I thought, but uh, uh let's take this uh I want to take this off. Let's just do a quick recap um and uh, take a look at it here. Yeah, this I well we we did see the we were we we thought we were going to get our move higher. 
uh, the, the sellers came in, they moved it back down, dr dropped it. We knew the sellers were in control at that point. Um, and we're looking for the buyers to try to take control back into these areas here. We had to get one more kind of dupe or, you know, uh, move lower here. Uh, and then uh, and then the buyers came streaming. And now, of course, this is when we look at the hindsight, it's real easy. But we're looking at it in some of these areas in here. OK, and then down in here, that scenario here, like if we can get back the order flow at this level, this important price level here, if we can get we know that this is a stop run here. It's a big one. Uh, if we can get back up above it, right, then we're looking for the and those buyers to try to take control back up above this level in here uh, and also this level in here, right? Then we're looking for moves back to other areas here, a swing here, point of control or where they drop from here. And the next level is here. And, and they've they've tested all of those uh, so far. And now we're seeing a move back to point of control. Right. So uh, now, you know, s structurally, uh, if they if the sellers can come right back in here, we're looking for a move back down to 60. And that's where the liquidity is. So let's go through, you know, the, the look for the uh, reaction to the uh, auction transitioning in here. See how we're still in the middle between high liquidity here at 66 and also here at 74. Okay. Well, let's see if we get some sort of skew, some sort of insight into that with high volume, right? Then we can we look for we can look for these moves and these tests into these areas here. All right, all right, guys. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll uh, I'll have the recording up uh, a little bit later, uh, and uh, let me turn it over to Tom uh, and look for his room to go live in a little bit. Uh, have a good weekend, everybody. Okay. All right. Thanks for coming. Bye bye.